Biscayne Bay continues to suffer sadly with another big fish kill just last week. That's the second time in two years it's happened. And while conditions seem to have improved and the fish kill subsided, scientists are still trying to figure out what triggered it. And we just learned the problem runs much deeper than anyone could have imagined. It's tonight's Don't Trash Our Treasure. Look, look the thing. I, I never saw something like that. They're, these are dying. They're dying, they're right, dying there. right there. Some of them are dead. I come here every, every day and this is not normal. It's been a devastating week for Biscayne Bay. This October has been the worst fish kill that we've seen since that 2020 event. In the past seven days, Miami-Dade County has removed more than 4,000 pounds of dead fish from the waters of the Northern Basin from Bay Harbor Island south to Morningside and east to Miami Beach. Another dagger in the big blue heart of our community, just two years after the unprecedented fish kill of the summer of 2020, when the Bay lost over 27,000 marine species. It's much bigger than the one before. 48 hours into the event, I join a research team from FIU's Institute of Environment to try and pinpoint the trigger spots, pockets of anoxia, no oxygen in the Bay, causing marine life to suffocate and die. These fish are suffering right now. 10 sites were sampled, the readings grim. What we're looking at is uh, what we just uh, assumed was uh, the case, zero dissolved oxygen, zero. We could see schools of fish struggling on the surface, some dying right before our eyes as flocks of hungry seabirds took advantage of an easy meal. So it's about 10.45 in the morning on a Friday, and we're still seeing lots of dead fish on the surface of Biscayne Bay. That's two days after the event, and we're right near the mouth of the Little River Canal. That's one of the most polluted bodies of water in all Miami-Dade County that consistently shows low oxygen levels. But this time, it wasn't just happening near the outfalls of the canals. Data showed the low oxygen was coming from the bottom of the bay. The river always brings low oxygen uh, water into the bay. Uh, but this, this time it's an event that is happening in the bay. Historical dirty water caused by too much pollution that's been accumulating in our groundwater for decades. But why was it suddenly released into the watershed on a cool windy day in October when the bay typically gets a break? It is pollution coming from septic tanks, from stormwater runoff, from sewage leaks and from fertilizer. But why the fish kills are happening on this particular day, on this particular week, is something we don't yet understand that trigger. Rachel Silverstein, executive director of Miami Waterkeeper, has been consulting all week with other scientists to try and solve the mystery. The poor water quality and the low oxygen is potentially coming from some interaction between the groundwater, the canals, and the bay. We're in a dire situation, and we are now taking actions that should have been taken over 20 years ago. Irela Baguet is the county's chief bay officer charged with reducing the pollution load and restoring the watershed. It will not be an easy fix and will take years. We have all hands on deck, and uh, we have the state partners working together with the county. We have the federal partners working together with us as well. Fast tracking infrastructure improvements and getting properties off failing septic tanks is crucial. Miami-Dade Mayor Daniela Levine Cava making the Bay a priority. We have reduced the fertilizers right during the rainy season. We've been very aggressive on enforcement of pollution around building sites. We know we have some really very uh, polluted uh, inflows to the bay and we're working aggressively on those as well. But make no mistake, this is on all of us. If we really want to save Biscayne Bay, everything we do on land matters. Things are not getting better. For me, I think that we're part of the, the, the problem, you know, but if we're part of the problem, we're also part of the solution. You know, I think that there's a lot that we can do. There is a lot we can do. We can stop using fertilizers on our lawns during the rainy season. We cannot throw our lawn clippings into any body of water, especially the bay. Pick up your pet waste, stop littering, and stop using single-use plastics. Yes, all of that matters, and our bay needs a break. Right now, scientists are bracing for a possible algae bloom like the one we saw last time after the last fish kill. And the county needs to get a handle on that as soon as it happens, if in fact it does happen. And they're asking the public to please stay vigilant and report any signs of algae blooms and more dead marine life. We have those important links on our website, as well as a statement from Water Management pledging to work with all stakeholders to help clean up our dirty canals. Scan that QR code there for more information. It really is the, the perfect storm. We have that dirty canal water right. rushing into the bay and we have that dirty groundwater bubbling up. We don't know why, but mm -hmm. we have king tides, we have high tides,
but really it's all our fault because it's our pollution yes. that's making that water so dirty. Right. So we have to step we up. We have to do something about we that. We have to step Everybody. up. Everybody. Okay.